Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Jana from I Learn Czech, and this is the second part in the series focused on Czech cases or declensions. Uh, in the first video, I was trying to explain why we have cases. Well, at least a little bit. Uh, and now let's have a look how many cases there are. Uh, well, so there are seven of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I believe it's... Um, well, how many were there in Latin? Was it six? Well, we have seven. So, uh, in Czech, uh, we call them by ordinal numbers. So this would be the first case, the second case, the third case, and so on. So when you want to talk to Czech people about it, you, well, it will not help you if you say, well, is this the nominative? Is this the accusative? Because Czech people will not understand what you mean. At school, we normally do not use uh, these Latin words. We use first, second, and so on. So, well, let me write also uh, the Czech words. So we would call this one uh, první pát. So pát is a case. Then this would be druhý. <laughs> oh my God, I'm saying it in English. Druhý, not a druhý. Uh, druhý pát, třetí pát. Čtvrtý, čtvrtý pát, pátý pát, šestý pát a sedmý pát. Co? So, uh, pát. Oh my god. Well, this should be repeated. And next to it, I will write uh, the Latin or English uh, words. So, well, um, okay, I'm going to write it the Czech way and also tell you how to pronounce it in, in Czech. So, the first one, první pád, nominative. Nominative. Okay, this should be an I and a V, so nominative. Uh, the second, well, in English, I would say the genitive, but in Czech, we do not have J, so that will be genitive. Genitive. Uh, dative, but in Czech, I will pronounce it dative. Dative. The fourth one would be the accusative, but I will say a ku za tif, accusative. The fifth one is the vocative in Czech, vocative. The sixth, and we are getting to the end. In English, I would say the locative. So it would have the same ending as the previous ones. But actually in Czech, we should call it lokal. Lokal. And the last one also has this al ending. So that's uh, in the instrumental. Uh, and the Czech pronunciation. Well, if I can write it correctly. Uh, okay is instrumental, 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 Jesus, that's a long one, nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, vocative, local, instrumental. Okay, so, well, this is it. And unfortunately, well, unfortunately for you, we also differentiate between singular and plural. So basically, theoretically, for one word, you could have seven forms in 
uh, the singular and seven forms in the plural. And luckily, it's not always the case because some of the forms can be the same. For example, sometimes uh, the genitive and the accusative are the same or the nominative and the accusative might be the same. Sometimes it's the dative and the locative. Uh, usually the instrumental is, is a bit different. Um, or, for example, and that's an interesting one, uh, the genitive singular might be the same as nominative plural. So you will find out that there are not 14 forms of one word, but there are quite a few. Um, well, what's important is that not all the cases are used with the same frequency. So, well, I'm sure that you will learn the nominative because this is the basic dictionary form. This is the default form of each word that you will find in a dictionary. Um, so you will learn this, right? Let's say this is the, the first form you will learn. Well, I will say uh, frequency here. See, and I don't remember any statistics right now. I don't remember. Um, I don't remember numbers. I haven't looked it up. Uh, it's not so important. But what you will need to learn next is. Uh, I would say the accusative. Because you need it quite often when you say, I want something, I need something, I see something. So the something, the form that mostly the object that I talked about in the previous video is in, it will be the accusative. So if you want to learn step by step, then the accusative is number two that you will learn. And after that, well, I believe that the genitive, the genitive, is uh, the third most frequent case. Because it's used a lot after many, many prepositions. And also when you speak about how much of something you have or need or how many. So uh, this will be it. After that, well, uh, it depends what you want to talk about. But let's say that uh, dative would be number four. Uh, why? Well, as you will see in the following videos, uh, or at least in one of them, um, the dative is used as, well, so-called indirect object. So, for example, in English, when you say, give it to me, so it, give it, that will be the accusative, it will be the object. Give me what? Well, it. And that to me, to whom you are, well, giving something or doing something. So that's often, that's normally in the dative case. Um, or you're sending somebody an email, so the somebody will be in the dative case. You're congratulating somebody or something. Again, here we go. That's dative. Um, okay. After that, um, well, so actually, um, genitive and accusative have something in common. Sometimes they have similar or the same endings. And the same happens for the locative and the dative. So, well, when you learn a little bit about the dative, uh, then mm, the locative might be useful for you. Because, of course, you need it when you want to say where something is located. That's where it comes from, location. However, and I am planning to get to it in one of the following videos, you should not think that everything related to location has to be in the locative case. Unfortunately, that's not so easy. Uh, well, but if you want to say something is in or on 
something else, then, well, locative is probably the one that uh, you will use. After that, I will say, uh, will be the, the instrumental. I mean, well, this is the order that I'm planning to make the videos in. But of course, well, quite honestly, will probably not leave the vocative uh, as the last case that you will learn. But you will just need to learn a tiny bit about it. So, the instrumental uh, is different. It's not the same as the vocative. It's kind of on its own. And at the same time, when you start learning Czech, you will learn the instrumental uh, even kind of without understanding or thinking about it. Because if you want to say how you travel, you will say autem, metrem. If you want to say that, for example, you want coffee with something, uh, well, you might, of course, say I want coffee and something, and then it will be the accusative. But if you want to say with then the form of the word after with will be in the instrumental form. Or you might want to say that you were talking with somebody or that you're living with somebody. So again, the instrumental is the case you will use. Uh, instrumental because, uh, well, as I said, um, you can say how you travel. So uh, I travel by car. So by or with are kind of instruments, uh, well, not only, and that's where this name comes from. And the last one uh, is a special case that, for example, well, if you speak Russian or other Slavic languages, but I don't know many of them, <laughs> uh, or not so well anyway, I know that in Russian, for example, there are uh, six cases. So. This would be like in Czech, although they, the, the order might not be the same. But what they do not have is the vocative. So the vocative is used when you want to address people. You want to call them. Uh, you want to talk to somebody specific and you use their name. So you might have noticed that Czech people might be changing your name. Why the hell, right? <laughs> For example, my name is Jana. But if you want to talk to me, if you want to address me, and maybe I'm not looking and you want to shout at me, then you wouldn't call Jana, but you would say, hey, Jano, Jano. You would change the ending. So instead of A, there would have to be O. And it could be the same for some uh, males. For example, if somebody's name is Honza or Jirka or Sasha, uh, then you, if you want to call them, you would also change it uh, into O. Well, uh, if you're interested in learning more about these cases and you don't want to wait for me <laughs> when I make the following videos, uh, you can have a look uh, at my website, um, ilearncheck.com. And if you just uh, search for, well, there will not be so much about nominative, but if you uh, write um, genitive into the search window, that should be somewhere up there in the right top corner, and then you should find not only some other videos where I might have explained this, well, in Czech, but there should be, translate, uh, there should be subtitles there, and hopefully not too bad, because... Uh, it's uh, generated automatically. I didn't uh, check and write all, all the subtitles. Uh, well, so if you look at my website, uh, you will not only find uh, explanation, uh, but you will also find some uh, interactive exercises or games on my website. So, well, have a look. Perhaps it will help you learn. But if you're patient and you don't want to bother with videos only in Czech, uh, then please wait. <laughs> and uh, I will now take it step by step. So, well, stay tuned. And uh, if you like this video, please give me a like, uh, share it uh, or become my subscriber. And otherwise, have a beautiful day and well, talk to you next time. Bye. Bye.